Hello class, this is Mrs. Matos. How are you doing today? Can you guys give me a wave? All right, today we're going to go over our seat work for lesson number 146. Okay, make sure to have your packet ready. We're going to go over all of the sections, okay guys? So make sure to be ready for me. Let me grab my book. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at number one. We're only going to look over the classwork portion of math. All right, let's go over the classwork, classwork, which is the one with the pies on it. Okay, so uh, the directions say, mark the bubble under the fraction that shows the greater part of the whole. All right, so the greater part of the whole. You guys have two options for that. Um, so pretend this is your pie. I already wrote, wrote it down for you so that you have your options there. Uh, which one would you think would be the greatest out of the two that we're comparing right here? Okay, so right here you have four pieces. Right here you only have two larger pieces. Which one is greatest? What do you think? Okay, so actually this would be the greatest because there's two equal larger pieces. This one has four smaller pieces. So your answer class should be the first bubble. Go ahead and bubble that in right now. Okay, let's go to the next example. The next example has a total of one, two, three. Sorry, this should have been colored, right? That's your pie. Okay, so this one has three and this one has four pieces. Now, based on what we just went over right now, which one is, out of these two, which one is the greatest? So which one has the most? So if you were to get a piece of this one, would you have more than if you get a piece of that one? What do you think? So the answer would be the one third. Go ahead and make your bubble. All right. Now, for number two, the directions say, circle the number that shows the total parts in the fraction. That actually, believe it or not, is very, very easy. The only thing that you have to do is literally just circle the bottom number because circle the number that shows the total parts in one fraction, in the fraction, okay? So we have, um, one half, we have one third and one fourth. So this is what you should do. Circle the bottom number for all of those, okay? All right? Now, for question number three, class, the directions say put one half, one fourth, and one third, listening ears, in order from least to greatest, okay? So let's go ahead and put these numbers from least to greatest, all right? Let's go ahead and do that right now. So the first answer class is going to be the one-fourth, right? One-fourth, if we look at this circle even here, there's uh, four pieces, so this, the pieces are getting smaller. So we're putting it from least to greatest, so your first answer is going to be one fourth. Okay, your next answer class is going to be one third. All right, one third. And then your largest piece is going to be the one half. Okay, and we can actually see through that example of the pies, the earlier example. So let's put one half. All right, great job. Okay. Now, um, for number, for number four, for number four, the directions say mark the bubble under the correct sign. So for number four class, you're comparing, you have one half, right? You have one half and then you have one fourth. Okay, you have one half and then you have one fourth. Which one of these two would be the, the one that has the most or the largest? Thinking caps on. 
So your sign actually should be facing the one half, all right? So make sure you make that selection. I think there's a bubble that you have to bubble. Uh, color in, make sure your face is facing this way, greater than, right? Greater than. Okay, great job. Now let's go to the next example. All right, the next example is saying one fourth class, one fourth, and then you have one third. All right, one fourth and then one third. Which one of these two is, um, let's see, which one is greatest? Which one is greatest out of these two? Okay, thinking caps on. So this is going to be this way. So make sure your sign is facing the opposite way. All right, so one third. It should be facing the one third. We have one last problem for that out of that section four. You have numbers, uh, the one fourth, sorry, one third and then one half that is being compared. One third and one half. Now, what direction class do you think your sign should be facing? Or is it going to be greater than or less than? What do you think? What side is it going to face? Which one is largest actually out of these two? Okay, the answer is your one half. Make sure your sign is facing that way, okay? All right, let's go to number five. Number five is a story problem class, all right? So story problem, Alex had 70 cents, right? He had 70 cents, okay? He spent 40 cents. That means we're gonna take away 40 cents from this, okay? We're gonna take away 40 cents away. All right, seven, I'm sorry, zero minus zero is still zero. Seven minus four is, what is your answer? You can say it out loud, three, okay? Your answer should be 30 cents, all right, 30 cents. Okay, there is one more story problem for you. Tina has a dime. Do you guys remember what the value of a dime is? You can say it out loud. The value of a dime is, yes, if you said 10 cents, you're correct. So Tina has a dime, which is 10 cents. She wants to buy some bubble gum for 16 cents. How much more money does Tina need? All right. So um, what we could do here is she needs to come up with 16 cents, right? So we can put 16, that is what she needs. That's what she wants to, she needs in order to buy what she wants to buy, right? So it would be uh, 16, the bubble gum is 16 cents, right? She only has one dime. So we're going to just subtract the dime to see what the difference is in the money that she will need to come up with in order to buy her gum. All right, so um, six minus zero class is six. Zero minus, I'm sorry, one minus one is zero. It's okay, you don't have to bring it down. Um, in this case, we'll know that we can't say point zero point zero six cents. It will only be six cents, okay? So your answer should answer, sorry, your answer should be six cents. All right, great job. All right, that is your math portion of seat work for lesson 146. Let's go over to your letters. Go ahead and grab your letters and sound packet. Okay, lesson 146. Okay, I'm going to read the top for you. A contraction is one word made from two words we use an apostrophe to show where letters have been left out. So for example, the word didn't would actually equal to or be the same as did not, right? The next example is she'll, which is the same as she will, all right? So looking over number one class where you have your little Sunday ice creams, ice cream sundaes, 
Um, you have these problems. We're only going to do the section on the left. You guys need to do the section on the right on your own. I am confident you guys can do it. All right, we're going to follow the same direction, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and work these problems out. All right, you guys have didn't, you have isn't, you have don't, you have hasn't. Your job is to match the words, whatever it means, or it's the same, uh, same as the contraction for each one of these on the opposite side. Okay, let's work together. So the first example is didn't, that's what they already gave you on the book. And that is the same as saying did not. All right, so didn't it will be the same as did not. Make sure that was already connected for you. All right, your next example is isn't. You guys know what it is? Thinking caps on. All right, so our options are to the right. We have is not, we have do not, and has not. Okay, so your answer is going to be is not. Make sure to make your uh, your line. All right, let's go to the next one. The next problem is don't. Don't. So it's do not or has not. What do you guys think? All right, if you guys say, if you guys said do not, is the same thing as don't. And then obviously the last answer will be has not for hasn't. All right, go ahead and uh, make sure you do this this, this uh, correct way. Then you will have another set of answer, uh, problems. You have one, two, three, four more that you need to work on your own. You guys got this. All right, let's go to number two. Okay, at number two class, the directions say, underline the root word. Write it on the lines. All right, so the first word that they have for you class is brushes. Can you guys echo me? Brushes, All right? The directions are for you to underline the root word and write it on the lines. So first, for the word brushes, can you guys think about what the root word is for this? For brushes? Okay, if you guys said brush, you are correct. So you should have underlined brush, and then um, in that empty sp a space, go ahead and write the word brush. All right, you need to write brush. Okay, next example is dirty. All right, dirty. What is the root word? Okay, so the root word for this class is going to be dirt. Can you guys echo me? Dirt. All right, so make sure to write it also in the black blank space. All right, next problem is stuffed. Stuffed. All right, your root word is stuff. Make sure to write it on the empty space. Your last example on the on the left side of your page is growing. Growing. You guys know what the root word is for growing? Thinking caps on. You can say it out loud. Okay, if you said grow, you are correct. Okay. You guys have one, two, three, four, five little popsicles that you need to work on on your own you're doing literally the same thing that we just did so we have done um you guys need to cover do this right side on your own i know you guys can do it it's the same um idea we're doing the same thing that we just did right now all right so that is for that's your letters and sound let's go to language all right language for language class, the directions tell us to finish the sentences. All right, so go ahead and get your language book. Now, class, uh, if you guys look, I don't want you to look at my answers. If you guys look at the pictures, class, those are your friends. They are your guides to help you write down the word that we are looking for, okay? So, for example, you have a space on the first, you have a blank, Let's fill it in together, all right? So blank, help farmers by eating harmful insects. 
All right, can you guys tell me what this is right here? You can say it out loud. That's a ladybug. So ladybugs help farmers by eating har harmful insects. So let's go ahead and write the word ladybugs. Remember in class that the beginning of every sentence should be capitalized, and that is the first word in our sentence. So it will have to be capitalized. All right, lady bugs. All right, so that is your first answer for your first sentence. All right, let's go to the next sentence. Blank use their strong back legs for hopping and their wings for flying. What do you guys think the answer is for that? Okay, as I told you before, the little picture that you have is your friends to guide you so that you know what to write, all right? If you guys said grasshoppers, you are correct. Again, the same rule applies. It is the beginning of your sentence, so it must be capitalized. Okay, let me go ahead and write that for you. Grass with two S's and hoppers. All right, let's read it together. Grasshoppers use their strong back legs for hopping and their wings for flying. All right, great job. Let's go to the third sentence. The third sentence class starts with a blank. Looks like a flying flower. What is this right here? picture word the picture tells you what the answer is like I said all right so a butterfly looks like a flying flower um, does that have to be capitalized thinking caps on yes or no you can nod your head yes or no so it does not have to be capitalized let me go ahead and write that word down for you butter to tease and fly F L Y. All right, butterfly. Okay. Next question, fourth sentence. Blank work hard to find food for their families. Okay, there's a picture there that shows you what those are. The answer is ants. Can you guys echo me? Ants. Okay, just a reminder, the first word is supposed to be capitalized because that's how we're starting the sentence with the word ants. So go ahead and capitalize your A, ants. All right, great job. Okay, all right. The last sentence for your language page says a blank is one of the fastest flying insects. A uh, blank is one of the fastest flying insects. Go ahead and look at your picture. What is that class? The very bottom? Okay. Um, if you said dragonfly, you are correct. All right. It does not have to be capitalized. Let me go ahead and write that for you. Dragonfly. Okay, dragonfly. All right. All right, so that is actually, um, once you do your language page class, go ahead and finish your cursive and do it nice and neat following your guides. And that really is it. Also, don't forget to do your seat work, tablet work, which is in our shared drive. And I would encourage you guys to write your spelling list 25 at least three times each word for practice. All right, your phonics and math tests 25 are ready for you to take. All right, they're on YouTube, so go ahead and take them. Uh, take your time, watch the video over and over to make sure you're not missing anything. And then I need a picture of the math and phonics test. 
All right, I hope you have a great day today and I hope this helps, all right? Bye.